Hey guys, Nerdnik here. I'm bringing you a video just covering some of the techniques I've used over the last few planes, uh, designing from a, a sketch or a three view uh, model here. Um, this this is uh, my third plane that I've I've uh, created plans for, and by no means am I an expert. Um, I I just kind of decided, hey, I want to do this, and I figured Photoshop is something I've played around with a lot in the past. So I feel pretty comfortable with it. I, I don't know if there's uh, an easier way um, to do this versus the way I'm doing it or the technique that I'm using. Um, I know others use uh, SketchUp or different programs to create uh, 3D models and, and it's probably <laughs> probably more accurate that way um, versus what I'm doing. But this is what, what I've kind of figured out has worked for me so far. Um, but if you have any ideas on how I can improve the process or maybe even the technique that I use with Photoshop, please let me know. I'd very much appreciate any input. I'm not an expert user by any means. Um, I've just fiddled around with it the last few years, messing with photos and doing design, you know, things here or there for family, um, but nothing nothing crazy. So I, I start out really, um, the easiest part is to do a fuse um, kind of sketch or, or trace. I take um, as close as I can to scale in terms of the curves and, and whatnot, um, keeping in mind the tail section um, w with the elevator, with where the fuse ends. Um, my first few planes, I had to make some tweaks to because I did not account for the size of the foam uh, when using Dollar Tree foam board or uh, moving parts like the rudder or whatnot. When you uh, when you try to move that piece, you have to kind of you have to have enough space for it to actually move. So what I'm doing now, um, some of the placements that I chose or some of the links that I chose, uh, a lot of it's based on just me doing it already and knowing all right, it needs to be off by a little bit so that it ends up being accurate with the foam. Um, some things I'm still learning, I'm still figuring out. Um, but yeah, so I usually start with a few sides I did there, one side view, and then I get the horizontal, I'm sorry, the vertical uh, stabilizer traced out and, and get the 50% um, uh, the, the cut line just in place just to get a an outline. Um, coming back and doing the placement, like where the tab goes, how does it intersect with the horizontal stabilizer, those things kind of come later. Um, they're they're uh, it's going to be different between the planes and there's not really a right answer on how to do it. I don't cover it in this video because I just didn't have time to go through it. So um, I, I just traced that piece. I'm going to go on to the uh, horizontal now. Uh, for this one, I do half of it. Um, I don't go around the whole side. Most of the plans are not perfectly accurate. Uh, I, I pick the plans based on what looks the most scale or has the most detail so that I can um, you know, g get the most realistic look that I can. Um, but I, I find often they're not, uh, each side of the, the drawing is not accurate, so I'll take one half of this piece, um, go ahead and save all the layers into one, and then just reverse it so that I get a nice mirrored uh, piece. Once I move this piece into place, as you as you can see, the the drawing is a little bit off. It's not not perfect, but it, it really doesn't matter at the end, uh, as long as it's it's pretty close here. Just go and name that piece. Um, the next thing I I try to do that I didn't mention at the beginning is I I when I took this plan, I one of the first changes I make is I I bring it up to a 300 DPI resolution from the seven or sorry 72 or whatever it might be. Uh, and that's really just to get an accurate centimeter to centimeter uh, when you print it out. The plans are, are true, you know, true size. Uh, otherwise, you'll end up with weird. Um, you know, on on Photoshop, you might see that it's, you know, three centimeters, but really, it's, it's that's not accurate to what it would be in real life. So, with a 300 uh, DPI, I can get a pretty close uh, and 
Also, that's what uh, the flight test plans are based off of. So if you're going to reference those, um, let's say for power pod, uh, uh, location, size, scale, if you want it to be as swappable as this one will be, then we uh, we need to have the same uh, DPI scale so that we can uh, build the plane properly. So when, once I get the the plane, uh, the plans to the right size, I use the, the power pod to kind of gauge how big do I want the plane to be, what's the wingspan going to be, what's the fuselage width going to be, length. Um, the power pod really kind of determines that. And some planes it gets difficult to keep everything scale while using the power pod design. So you have to make sacrifices or compromises somewhere. On this plane, um, the wing, I, I wanted it to be about 40 inches. That's a pretty common size, a pretty standard size just in general for a plane. But it also works nicely with the power pod uh, and, and the size of motor you would get out of it. So to do that, I had to compromise on the fuselage width. Um, this is a pretty, I would say rectangular other than the nose. It's, it's a very straight fuselage. Um, and so it, it's hard to taper the nose with with such a long uh, fuselage of the same size. So to do that, I, on this plane I had to, um, as you can see, it, it's it's more narrow than it really will be. Um, those, the outline that you see is not accounting for the foam width, so it'll be you know, a little bit wider, but not by a whole lot. Um, so this, this plane is not going to be scale at all by the, uh, when it comes to specific width and everything of the, of the design. Uh, length, wingspan, the elevator, the horizontal, all, all those should be as scale as it can be, but it will be more narrow. Shouldn't affect any kind of flight, uh, and for the most part, from a side view, you know, you won't be really be able to tell unless you're looking directly on that it's a different size. tab piece that I put at the end, that's where the fuselage is going to end, and I put that there, that, that's the width of uh, a piece of foam, so that when I build this center piece of the fuselage, the tail piece comes together where the, where the, um, the fuselage has to pinch and, and glue to the rudder, that it actually is the right uh, right angle so that it, it meets at that um, you know, 0.47 um, centimeter or whatever. Uh, width. Um, I didn't do that on my first few planes and I had to adjust it afterwards. So this is one of the little, you know, adaptions that I've made um, as I've built, you know, a few planes. And it, it seems to work pretty, it's pretty accurate. I, I give it a little extra usually uh, just to, you know, give you enough room to squeeze some glue in there and pinch it down. It doesn't have to be super, super snug as a dry fit, but you want it as close as you can so that you're not bending or, or having a weird, um, uh, you know, severe um, angle there right at the end of the fuselage. You want it to be nice and straight coming back from behind the wing down to the tail. With this, I, I, I generally get the shape that I want and then this piece is going to turn into two pieces. One, the, the belly of the of the plane, uh, and then also the top plate of the fuselage. I, I'll make it as just one piece initially, and then I kind of, as you can see, I'll, I'll cut it down, um, save it to another uh, another uh, uh, layer, and then copy the original one back so that I can, I don't have to remake the piece, but it doesn't give you different sizes. I, I, I like the design of the Mustang, the, the Flight Test Mustang. Um, or at least the techniques used where the fuselage top is the constant piece between the, the two um, sidewalls versus the, the belly like on the Spitfire. Um, it, it just comes out a little cleaner. You get the, the belly piece can have the overlap so you don't see any uh, rough foam. The, the edge is nice and, uh, nice and clean with the paper. So I, I like this design better. Uh, but to do that you have to um, take the, the center piece here and kind of cut it down because it's really only um, you know, half the width of the plane, whereas the, the belly piece is going to be longer. So I split it into two here so I can start to, um, you know, really uh, uh, make the difference between the two pieces and then join the, 
the side of the fuselage here so that you can create your A or B fold, um, you know, as as, uh, as we like to do. So I'm still using the power pod uh, layer underneath here just to be a guide for you know width and everything so that the plane matches what it needs to be um, in terms of um, uh, how wide the fuselage is and, and you really want to make the power pod fit if you're going for a soft pull design. Um, so now I'm cutting off the tail here because again the top plate of the fuselage is, is a single piece um, that ends right, right about where the cockpit ends. Um, it doesn't have a, a solid back piece. You, you can definitely do that with a, uh, a design if you want. Um, it makes it a little more challenging for servos and everything, so I usually leave it open. Um, another thing about this plane that I didn't mention is the horizontal uh, stabilizer is not... Um, it's not level with where the fuselage height is. So on most planes, and this just kind of ends up this way, it's not a standard or a rule or anything, but generally wherever your fuselage height is, like the top plate, where, where I have my um, the, the 250% score cuts there, if you follow that line straight back to where the horizontal stabilizer is, um, it generally is about the same height, and that gives you enough uh, headroom to add your formers, right, so you have the proper curve to your um, uh, the nose of the plane and, and near the cockpit and everything just so the poster board has a nice curve to it. If you go, if you slosh too high or too low, then you end up with a weird, you know, looking plane. On this design, though, the horizontal stabilizer just is really low, and this this will be one of the first ones that I've built like this. Um, the, the chipmunk that I'm designing has a similar uh, setup. I haven't built it yet, though, so I don't know how it's going to turn out. But really, it's, it's kind of interesting because I had to create a... Uh, a bit of a divot uh, down so that the horizontal stabilizer will sit lower as it is on the actual design um, while the fuselage plate is you know a bit taller. I, I don't think it's going to have any impact or anything, it's just kind of an interesting note compared to the uh, other designs. So now I've brought in the uh, nose of the FT Mustang and one I'm just making sure my lines are good. Um, most of the measuring I just did was off the top of my head or just based on what I've done or using the power pod just as a guide, but now I'm going to grab these fuselage holes just so, I'm sorry, the um, the power pod notches so that your your existing power pod can fit right in there. You don't have to do any other adjustments. It'll be ready for you. We'll make one of these and just copy it over to the other, other three. be as exact, as exact as possible. Uh, it, these little tiny details don't matter that much, but it comes, if, you, if you do you know, some extra work here, it comes out real crisp and clean. I kind of like the design of this plane. Uh, it definitely reminds you know of a Mustang. It's got the scoop on it. I uh, had, had never seen a MiG-3 before, but I thought it was it was pretty cool. I like the really wide wing. Uh, I think it'll, it'll translate really well to a foam board plane. Um, it, it should fly very, very stable, have a very low stall speed, um, and just be a good, you know, floaty, well-performing plane. Um, I, I'm hoping I can, you know, come up with something well here with the wing. I, I think that's going to be the real, um, you know, the real deciding factor if it's a good flyer or not. But it shouldn't be too hard, um, and maybe it'll compete with the uh, the flight test Spitfire in terms of how easy it is to fly and just how stable and nice it is. belly piece like I was talking about it's similar to the Mustang where um, because of the overlap here of paper uh, the bottom piece does not have um, any kind of exposed foam so it ends up really clean really nice and it's not a whole lot of extra work to to add this piece 
Now, as I'm uh, designing this, I, I'm forgetting to mention that the, or, or I'm forgetting to account for the fact that the scoop is there. Um, on most planes, you can do a straight belly like this, and it's done. With the scoop, I'm going to have to break this into two separate pieces, and then add the um, the duct hole there for for the scoop itself. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to finish this since I I kind of need both these pieces, this piece anyway, and I can just kind of cut it uh, in half here in a little bit. But I, next time, if I design a plane with a scoop, I won't uh, I won't do it like that. I'll, I'll do two separate pieces. Um, just made a new um, uh, a, a new document here, and I'm adding um, the, the pieces to it. I, I made it the size of a piece of foam board, so 30 by 20. This also gives me a good frame for um, when you print it out. So uh, if it fits on this page, it should fit on one piece of foam uh, within a, a small margin of error because of a printer margins. But essentially, this I'll save the pieces like this, so it's easier for uh, everyone to print it out or to use it as you know as they want they don't have to worry about a huge you know eight foot piece of paper um, it'll be broken into um, you know manageable sizes here so here's the the splitting that I was talking about where I have to account for the scoop um, and I don't I don't complete that in this video just because it was getting late and I was you know I was tired so um, go ahead and split it up So I think it came along pretty nice. I sped this video up slightly um, after I recorded it, so it's not real time. It, it's not double time, but it's uh, it's a little bit quicker just so the video wouldn't be quite as long. But this I think took me 40 minutes or 35 minutes or something like that to to do from start to finish. Um, and there, there's I still have the wing. I still have to create the contact points and the tabs between the. The horizontal, and, uh, sorry, the horizontal and the vertical stabilizer, uh, which will take you know a little bit more time. The spar, the wing, it probably has another 30, maybe 40 minutes before I would say that the version one and the plans are done. So hopefully this was informative. Um, if you want to try this out, please do. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know, and I try to help as I can. Um, again, the process I just kind of went did it as I. You know, just just kind of making it up as I went. So if you have any thoughts on how I can improve it, make it more streamlined, faster, be great. Thanks for watching.